This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients, personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit Take care of dot com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. It's a podcast about love and dating and trying to figure out why I'm so dang single. My guest today is a person that I spend a lot of time with. I work with him. He plays my best friend and roommate on my show that is now on Facebook called Loosely Exactly Nicole. Ooh, it's Jacob Wysocki! Wah, 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 wah! Happy to be here. Happy to be in the historic arts district of East Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. That is where we are. We're in the (laughs) arts district. We're downtown. So, Jacob. Yes, Nicole. Hi. You are a single man. Correct. I'm a single man. And are you on apps? Uh, I have them on my phone. My engagement with them is especially probably in the last two months, non-existent. Is it because you are working? Is it because you've lost interest? I just don't think those things work for a guy like me. What does that mean, a guy like me? Um, I'm a bigger dude. Yes. So I carry some weight around. Yes. And I think those apps are very much organized and made to work in the world of vanity and like instant gratification of like, ooh, this person, I'm initially attracted to like physically and visually likes me. So I get that little dopamine. Mm -hmm. I don't think I give that to people based on the pictures of me on the internet. And that could just be like me being, you know, uh, self-conscious or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I have friends who are hot and they do great. You know what I mean? (laughs) Sure. Yeah, it is. It is a thing where you're like, okay, it must be the way I look. Yes. Because hot people do well on these. And, and I do not. I don't. I mean, I, I'm not, for the listeners, I'm not ugly. No, Jacob has an adorable cherub-like face. And you've got long, beautiful, tumbling, curly hair. Mm. 
I think you dress. You have a very distinct style. He's sitting here in some little overall shorts, a shirt with a, <laughs> an octopus on an it. octopus on it, and it's like slightly tie dyed. It's cute. It's yeah, a look. I have it's, a vibe. Yeah. Yeah, you got a cute little vibe. I I don't know what it is about bigger people. Well, I say fat people. Is that offensive to you? Uh, no, no. I think uh, it, I think fat people can call fat people fat and use the word fat. I think everyone can use the word fat. Yeah. Do you, if someone goes, if a thin person were to say to you, Jacob, you're fucking fat, would you be insulted? Uh, were they being funny or were they? was it in malice? Uh, it could be in malice. Uh, I, would, I would let it roll off the duck's back, but it's impossible for it to not trigger that like third grader. You know ah. what I mean? Like it's import it's like impossible for me to not like hear the echoes of like titty boy, titty boy. They called titty you boy. titty boy? They called me everything, man. F- you know, I got it all. Man, that fucking sucks. It does. And I'm grown and I know that like they're idiots. Like mm-hmm. I still have adults. Like that's how they try and cut me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like in social arguments or whatever, just like when somebody's an asshole at a bar or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of laugh because it's like, wow, you still think like a third grader. Mm-hmm. I I guess I had a different experience growing up. Nobody made fun of me to my face. Uh huh. If shit was said about me, it was behind my back mm-hmm. because I was very good at extrapolating that thing and you that would hurt your feelings. So do you think you were um, you think you were cutting them before they could cut you? I don't think there was like one girl that I would cut just to like show that like. If you're going to try to, like, she didn't even do anything to me. <laughs> she was truly just, like, at the wrong time or yeah. at the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'd just be like, uh, whatever, I'd say shit about her. I'd just, like, to let everybody know that's, like, I, like, will talk shit. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not here to, like, have you make fun of me or whatever. Also, I was black in an all-white school, so uh-huh. I was inherently cool. Yes. Because it either goes one or two ways mm-hmm. when you're the only black kid somewhere. You're either very cool or people are like, you are an N-word. Uh-huh. And then, like, mean to you and make your life miserable. I was very lucky yes. that I grew up with a bunch of white people who were like, Accepting. I go tanning and I love hip-hop. <laughs> Eminem makes me feel like I can do anything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess that is like triggering the word fat for me. Everyone has fat. Some people are just fatter than most. Yes. And honestly, it took like a very long time for me to get to this place. Mm -hmm. So if someone calls me fat, I'm like, and you have brown hair. Like, what are we saying? Facts? What is it? Yeah. We having a fact Olympics? Because I'm here for it. You got feet too. I think that's, that's an ideal that I would like to get to where it is like, that's the mentality of people Mm -hmm. where it's just like another look or another thing. You know, because mm-hmm. I it was just like it's not like you decide to really be fat. No, it's and I think like, people think it is a choice. Like no one, no one chooses to look differently than the social norm. No, that's not a thing that people do. I guess like you have your exceptions of like the well, punk and goth people, but, but you're still conforming still, to a you subculture. You look like another person you saw. Yeah, like no one is saying no one. So growing up, you have skinny dolls. And you're told that this is what healthy looks like. And you're told, eat lots of apples and keep the doctor away or whatever. And then you see fat is bad. So no one's like, that bad thing. I think I want that. It's Yeah, I also feel like I got the message a little too late in my life that it was bad to be big. Oh, really? Yeah, because, I mean, my parents loved me. I was Mm -hmm. an only child. So it was like I could do no wrong. Mm. And... I remember, like, I don't remember how old I was, but being weighed and it was like 100 pounds, and I thought that was tight because mm-hmm. I was like big, strong, like mm-hmm. um, I'm growing or whatever. And then the the doctors really never said anything until I was like 13, 14, and it's like, dude, these habits are here now. Yeah, these are here to stay. Yeah, and like this the, is the like... mental shit is here now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was like, well, I'm a big guy. Like, it's too late. You mm-hmm. should have told me when I was seven, eight, nine that this was an issue and -hmm. like not nip it in the bud or something. I got a lot of shit from my dad's side of the family. And then I distinctly remember my doctor going, Oh, this is just baby fat. She'll slim out yeah. you know, when she hits puberty and then puberty hit and then it didn't slim out. And nobody was like, Oh, this is, this is just like fat. She's fat. <laughs> uh, there is not baby. She's fat. The diagnosis was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I I diagnosed her incorrectly. She's just a fat person. Well, uh, my folks had a very I had a very similar thing where it was like I'll stretch out, mm-hmm. which I did because 
I I hit the pubes late. I hit the puberty late. And I truly grew like three inches, four inches like in a year. Oh, yeah? So I used to be much shorter and heavy. Oh. And then despite stretching out, I was still big. But it was just more proportional. Like I could carry it better, mm -hmm. if that made sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I hit puberty late. Like I didn't get my period till high school, which I was Sheesh. super happy with. Because my sister would be oh, like, yeah. I'm crampy, and I'm a bloody mess. And I'd be like, ooh, dry as a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm dry as a bone. I'm yeah. dry. Ooh, ooh, no crampies here. And then, uh, like, I didn't get titties till later. Ooh, and your friend would stuff her bra with lots of tissues. Wow. Because I was, like, fat with no titties. And I was like, this is not fair. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, man, it was just tough. And... Yeah, growing up fat is tough. Like uh, people, I didn't have, I didn't have sexual interactions until I was eighteen, nineteen. Like I didn't have, or no, no, no. I blew a guy. Oh boy. When I was like fifteen or something. <laughs> okay. But like other than that, it was like just this one time. Yeah, I mean, I remember the first time I hugged a girl, and like I feel like that. You remember a... the first time you hugged a girl? Yeah, and I was like, I, I was like six, sixth grade or seventh grade, and it was like people that I was friends with, but I was like. I guess I didn't get that kind of attention, and so uh -huh. it was a moment to remember. I would, like, make things happen. Like, I remember distinctly in kindergarten opening the door, and a little boy was peeing, and I was like, dang, <laughs> why are you not sitting? <laughs> oh. And then the teacher was like, Nicole, you need to close the door. And I was like, I got stuff I need to figure out, man. I have seen this some This is things. wild to me. And then... <laughs> Like, and then it, like, wasn't sexual or anything, because I was in kindergarten. Yeah, of course. But, like, I just, like, didn't leave him alone, and I was just like, you got to tell me more about this apparatus you have. Mm -hmm. This is very curious to me. So I guess I don't, I don't remember, like, the first time I, like, touched a dude. I just remember I've always kind of just been, like, very curious about dicks. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have one. What's They're it crazy. like? crazy. I want to, can I feel it? Can I touch it? <laughs> Nicole, please, no, stop. Go sit down and but do But that was a curiosity, uh, like, unconnected to sexuality. At Correct. least at that age. At that age, yes. It's like but an anatomy thing. at, like, fifth grade, I was just like, ooh, I want boys to kiss me. Mm -hmm. Which I think is, like, kind of early. Were other girls your age being kissed? Not in, like, fifth grade, I don't think. Yeah. Or if it happened, it was like, oh, this wild thing. Like, Matt Drury kissed me, and it's crazy. Uh, I feel like people didn't get busy till like middle school. Yeah, and then, that's like, kind of people... where it hit with uh, like you had like boyfriend girlfriends, yes. but they would just like hold hands on the schoolyard. Yeah, which is dumb as shit. Fuck. Got real in middle school. Yes, people started like really hooking up in middle school, and then that's when I was like, oh, I think being fat and black might prevent it because it's like no matter how cool I am. I don't think any of those little white boys are going to like bring a black girl home to mom and be like, yeah. you like this? And have her be like, no. I also had the comparison of like constantly in my life having friends that are just like very handsome, straight white dudes mm -hmm. that clean up. So I always had the contrast of like being the fat best friend that's like, damn, Justin's like got like always dancing with girls at the dance and mm -hmm. like kisses girls and like cleans up. And I am in not that. So you're like, oh, it's because I'm this way mm -hmm. if i looked like justin i'd be doing the same thing because we're both it wasn't like a personality thing we were very similar mm -hmm. kids yeah i it guess was just, it is like a aesthetically pleasing thing i loved this kid in middle school named mark d'angelilio d'angelilio oh. yes sheesh he was blonde and he was perfect and i think i was in sixth grade and he was like in eighth grade and i don't know why but i saw him and i was like him I'm going to love him. And I like sent him a rose on Valentine's Day. That's sweet. And then he sent me a, I believe it was like a pink one for interested. And I was like, ah, he is interested in me. And I lived off that for a full fucking year. Yeah, man, that's a high. And I can't remember if I ever asked him out, but I know we like danced at a dance and I like backed my ass up into him. And then he got like a beautiful little white girlfriend. And I was like, oh no. Oh, okay. So yeah, growing up, I think it was like being fat and being black really hindered me until I moved to New York, where it was just like an eclectic fucking melting pot of people, where it was just like, yeah, like I had a fat ass and that was desirable to some people. Yeah. And then I did lose a little bit of weight when I was in school because 
I was just like walking around the city a lot and doing a lot of cocaine. <clears throat> and, you know, when you're doing coke, guess what you're not doing? Eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, baby. And then I was trying to be scrappy because I didn't have a lot of money. So, like, I would steal food. <laughs> I would go to Gristini's with like a tote bag. And I'd go, all right, well, what are the necessities? Yeah. I guess I'll get, like, some apples or whatever, but, like, wine. We all need wine in Boone's Farm. Yes. So, like, load up on that shit and then, like, go to the pizza place, get a slice of pizza, eat it in the back, and then just walk out. Like, it was just, like, being scrappy, didn't have any money, lost some weight. And then I remember, like, seeing my dad after not seeing him for, like, three yeah. or four months, and he was like, no, God, your body is so small. And I was like... Wow, if only he knew. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. what it took to get down to that size. Being like poor and literally eating scraps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doing I mean I mean bringing it back around to the to, dating. the, to yes. the Tinder and yes, the dating yes, thing. Yes. Like I do better in the real world because mm-hmm. people get to notice me and there's a level of like ego and vanity that gets separated from that app in the real world that I can operate in functionally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's still a fucking struggle. And I'm an idiot, and I always, like, try to go after chicks that are never going to date me, you Yeah, know? but I feel like you pull some really hot babes. I have, as humble as I can be, a perfect track record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I do well, but it's always, for the most part, like, I put in hours to, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got to do the work to be the schlubby big dude dating a very attractive girl uh and you have to just be like cooler than everybody else and that takes a lot of energy here's the thing that's gonna happen to you sure as you get more successful you're gonna have to put in less and less work you'll just be like hello and girls will be like oh my god and isn't that why i'm doing it you know (laughs) that's why we got into comedy yeah can i I see your dating profile is that okay uh, my phone's downstairs charging but absolutely you. it's okay we don't even have to go there yeah you have seen it so we could oh you're right i have seen it you have good pictures i can't remember what your caption actually says uh there's a couple things it's like just looking for somebody to braid my hair Mm, which is like we it's a, a talking point ah so do you not actually want someone to braid your hair oh absolutely that'd be wonderful That'd what kind great. of braids you looking for? Just two Frenchies. Like I don't want to do anything like over the top. What about you know some what nice mean? box braids? Would you? I I would do it if you like wanted to see it because it'd be funny. But I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing box braids. Fair. Just like Fair. I don't think I'd be comfortable wearing like cornrows or something. Fair. Which I've done and had to be in like a very public. I think I had like cornrows for like a wig that I had to wear in a show and then I had to immediately go and do like an improv show <laughs> with cornrows and and like That's great. Lacey was just like <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. What is this? Yes. That's um, funny. But and then I I have a joke about like being part of like the last bit of California old growth which is just like me really putting oh, me into yes, the profile. Yes, yes. Uh and then like I think I have a UCB drop because I'm trying to get those slugs. <laughs> Um, and slugs. Slugs. You know I how think, like is that what I call a chuckle fucker? I guess a slug for me has become a very broad term of just uh-huh. like slugs and snails. Like you know how they like come out after the rain. Oh yeah yeah. It's yeah. like that kind of thing. Like Ugh. they're like they're like slowly crawling back. You like girls like that? I don't necessarily like, think I like Why? girls like that, but it's what exists sometimes. Like fair. Especially, yeah, you know what I mean? You get a lot of that energy. I don't necessarily think that they're, like, attracted or want to date, but just being, like, uh, a comedic entity. Sure. Like, around UCB, you get slugs. I don't get slugs. But you get, I feel like you get, you get it in the, like, it's probably a similar way that I get it sometimes that's maybe non-romantic where it's just, like, I want to leech your energy and like your essence and I'm like I love watching you and I've seen you a hundred times and I hey Nicole can we just talk real quick you know what I mean no not even for really? dudes it's uh women women do that but I I still think that that can be like a level of slug that's sucking yeah. out your energy yeah women like to be like how um you're funny and I just want to like have coffee with you and talk to you dudes that's a form of slugging in my opinion yes I do I 
I don't get the romantic slugs. I also don't get men after shows who are like, oh, wow, you're so funny. I got to be near you. I get a lot of like, you were funny for a girl. Or like, I never really thought, oh, I did one fucking show. It's uh, Best Fish Tacos, one of my favorite shows in L.A. Um, Did my set, get off stage, and this guy comes over to me. He's like, man, I have never seen a funny woman in my life and i was like what okay great he was like never and you are you're so funny like where did you come from and i was like i'm not a fucking alien and there are funny women so i started like rattling like names off and he was like who are these people i was like female comics yeah who are doing pretty well and are very funny like my takeaway from this story is like you showed him the light and how how really tight is that I hope he went home and looked up these people. But yeah, honestly, like you not. really shattered his consciousness. It was nuts, though. I was like, how have you never seen a funny woman? I mean, that's just like somebody being like super, <laughs> super like biased and bad. He also said he was like, I hate Muslims. I was like, oh, what? Good. And he's like, I can say that because I am Muslim. Not and good. I was like, nah, bro. You can't just like group together a bunch of people and say you just don't like them. That's crazy. You can't do that. Uh. So have you ever been on a date with someone from a dating app? Yes. And? (sighs) It's never good, man. No? It's never good because it's like continuing this like Fugazi facade. Uh You're continuing that like. That false intimacy that texting someone brings. Yes. And like false confidence too Mm -hmm. because you're like, he swiped on me. It's like I swiped on a lot of people, (laughs) you know? Um I'm trying to think. I, it's usually like we meet up. It's never been good, mm-hmm. which is also probably part of the reason why I don't use them anymore. Because mm-hmm. like the few times that I have, I would say maybe three times. Uh, one time this girl made me drive her to her mom's old house. What? She's like, that's where my mom and I used to live. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then she was like, pull over. And I was like, does this girl like want to make out in front of her mom's old house? <laughs> And we were like kind of chatting and I like pulled away and she's like, no, pull back over. And so I was like, okay, so this girl kind of wants to make out, I guess. Uh And I like went in, this is going to be tough for the podcast, but I like went in for the kiss and she went like, kind of like rolled her eyes up and was like, and like exhaled in a way of like, I guess I'll kiss you. Oh no. And it's like, no, dude, you had me do a double pullover. You like opened up to you up. You opened up to me about your like mom and like your living situation. Like Mm -hmm. this isn't a double take. This is like, you know, this is a short thing. But also this is wild to be like, can you drive me to like my old house and then pull over and I'll tell you about it. And then we have to pull over again. That's so weird. Very weird. I had another girl who came at me hot mm-hmm. and was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Cha, cha, ta, 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 su, tu, tu, na, 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 qua, qua, qua. <laughs> la, qua, la, qua, la, And qua. I was like on the fence. I was like, uh-huh. this is not my normal type of chick, but like I'll okay. go for a ride. Uh, she, I pick her up. She lived pretty close to me. I pick her up. She immediately know that she's nervous. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like really trying to not collide with that vibe. I'm like, like, hey, like being really open uh-huh. and just trying to be so chill. Energy. Yes, energy. And she kind of calms down a little mm-hmm. bit. But I get, like, yes, be nervous. Yes. You're getting to a strange man's car. Yes. You don't know where I'm taking you. So we go. You didn't tell her where you were taking her? No, but I mean, like, you don't know if I will. Oh, yes, if we had a plan. Kidnap yes. her. Yeah, we had a plan. <laughs> I mean, that would be wild. She was like, just whisk me away. Just take me away, Jake. Just take me away from this this hellhole of life. Uh, we got some ice cream, and then she was like, "Let's go back to your place," because she mm-hmm. had been chanana so so so. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, "We're about to chanana so so so." And we get there, we like put on some bullshit Netflix or whatever, mm-hmm. and then it like quickly turns out she's like a virgin and like <gasps> put up this whole front and was like lying about Whoa. all this. And I was like, "You got to go." Like I got like this. I'm not the dude to do this with you. I don't feel comfortable anymore because like this is clearly like a lie. What else Uh are you lying about? Um, Like, wait. So how did it come out that she was a virgin? It was like I like went to go kiss and she was like, Uh you know, like had her arm around me and was like Mm -hmm. tickling my shoulder, doing the basic Netflix sort of like phase shift. Uh And then I like went 
to go kiss her and she's like i'm a virgin like i've never really done anything with a guy and i was How just old like was she? she was 23 24 wow 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 yeah. um but like all of the text and all of the like uh-huh. conversations it's like we're that, like that, sexual that, yes very much interesting. so interesting like unprompted you know? Oh, really? She was like, I'm going to suck your dick. Yeah, it was just nasty. And then she was like, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time that I ever met up with somebody. And I think like in the sickest way, in the most honest way I can be, the only time I use those apps is to like have a 30-minute conversation with a human and feel kind of decent about myself, that they're willing to talk and be like, you're somebody that I'll at least give some attention to. Fair. Which is sick and gross, and so why it's be in that? It's not sick and gross. I think there's like, I feel like the older I get, the more dating. I don't. I feel like a lot of people are trash. Like a lot of people are yes. garbage, and I don't know how to find a good one. Like I don't. There's, there should be like a you know like a rec center where there's like a Saturday night of good people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like all the good people come together and you can meet other good people. But a bunch of shitty people would show up that think they're good. You're right. That's and... the problem. So you have to do the sussing on your own, mm-hmm. which is absolutely tiring. It is. It's very exhausting. It's, I mean, out of like, because I do talk to a lot of dudes on Tinder and I would say one out of 10 is like, okay. That's the thing is like, these are, you'd like become sort of complacent with the, the batch that you can grab. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, I like chocolate chip cookies. That's the batch of cookies I want. Mm-hmm. But like on Tinder, I can only get oatmeal. And it's like, I guess I'll fucking eat an oatmeal cookie. Yeah, man. Cause I'm alone. <laughs> yeah. I... And you're like, maybe it's better than being alone. And it's probably not. Okay, let's take a break, even though this conversation is steaming up. But don't worry, it's going to stay steamy when we get back. I mean, at this point, I just want dick that I know. Like, I'm... That consistency. Yeah, like, I had someone pretty consistent for a little bit and then would, like, hook up with other people in between... And then, but like, I always had the consistent thing to go back to. Now that I don't have that, I'm like, so this is life. Life is just continuous, random Tinder hookups. The consistency is such a double-edged sword because I don't, like, somebody's going to cop feelings. Yeah. And then you're either dogging yourself or you're dogging someone else. And like, how long can you allow yourself to be the bad guy and hurt somebody Mm -hmm. so you can get the nut and then they're still there because they love you. That's why I want the fucking relationship. That's like, and then also, I don't know, I moved into a new space and I like the space and I feel like it's a very positive energy and I just don't want dudes rolling in and out. No, man. I don't want them like fucking up my energy. Like, no, because the they I got will. Going. They'll consume yes. that space. And yes. They'll consume you. That's the older I get, that's what I realize about people is they're consuming. Yes. And I, it's a hippie thing because it involves energy. But the older I get, the more I believe in that stuff. And that's what people do, man. They just fucking take it out of you because I they agree. want some of your fucking juice because you got amazing juice. Hey! You know what thank I mean? You. You're juicy as hell. Oh, I'm juicy. And people are just oh, like, <laughs> juicy. <laughs> juicy baby. Oh, juicy baby. And so people want to get just like the smallest taste and they'll do whatever. Yeah, I guess. And I'm learning that like I have friends that I can hang out with all day, every day. Like you, you're good. Like you're good. I can hang out with you for a very, like, I don't know. You don't, you don't have a bad energy. You know when to be quiet. You know when it's time to giggle. So Sheer, my best friend, is also a great example of that. She knows when it's time. Like, she, there's time and place for everything. But then there's, like, some people where I'm like, I can literally only be near you for two hours before you are just, like, you fall into this, like, bad place where, like, you're, like, trying too hard to, like, yeah, get me to laugh or, or, like, get me to do something. And I'm like, fuck, just, like, chill and be. Just, like, just be. I have somebody very close to me that is sort of like that. But I always just try to remember, like, I love them. And Mm -hmm. the fact that I can only have two hours with them doesn't affect or make them less of a friend or affect the way that I love and receive and Mm -hmm. give. It's just like, yeah, I got two hours with you and I try my best. Mm -hmm. And then you just, 
you consumed me. Yes. You got all my energy. And for the day. We, I have to leave you. Mm -hmm. I hung out with a friend recently. This was a couple weeks ago who she like we were hanging out and I hit like my wall and I was like, oh, boy, I don't know how much longer I can talk to you because it's almost as if she's trying to convince me that she's successful. And it's like this isn't a competition like it's really yes. life is not a competition like i have trouble keeping my eyes on my own paper sometimes but i make a very consistent effort to do so mm -hmm. so when i have a friend who's talking to me and she's just like x y and z is doing this blah 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 and i'm like this you're ju you're draining me because i have to like think about what other people are doing and it's going against what i ugh, it was i was like exhausted from hanging out with yeah. her for like it was like three hours and I just, like, couldn't get away from her fast enough. Well, and it's like those people are pulling you into places your brain don't don't like to be at. Yeah, my brain don't like, <laughs> like to, to be, be there. No, because I pay a therapist to help my brain not go there. Well, that's the thing. If you're spending energy in your day-to-day -to, -day to, like, not look at other people's paper and not compare mm -hmm. yourself to X, Y, Z, and then all of a sudden somebody puts you into that mental space, like, you work so hard to not. Mm -hmm. Don't bring me there, man. Don't fucking bring me there. And then that's why, like, I I want to date a comic, but then also, like, don't. I have tried to date normies, and that's in air quotes for you. <sighs> yeah. You, uh, and I kind of hate that I even say normies. But well, they are. They're a different breed of people. People who have to get on a stage every night are different than people who are like, oh, no, I have no desire to ever do that. It's And it's always, like, less than. I don't yes. want to. I'm not judging the people. I'm judging the experience and the yeah. connection. It's always less than, and it's always, like, yeah, I don't care about Ron, like, who, like, has coffee breath at the office. Yeah. Like, I really, I mean, I'm sorry that sucks for you, but, like, what do you think mm -hmm. about the fucking moon, man? Like, <laughs> let's get somewhere. <laughs> and it's, like, they're very, they limit their mental capacity to, like, ex ex explore these bigger ideas and, like, have fun. And they mm -hmm. put themselves in a box, like, in their world. That, and and they like... are, their minds are, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's Jacob not that much water. Knocked over some water. Uh, he was talking about the moon in our minds, <laughs> <laughs> and then just knocked oh, over shit. some water. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could be all wrong too. No, I talking to normal people. It's like sometimes they don't even get bits, and you say something, they're like, "Oh, really?" And like, "Oh no, I'm yeah, it was a joke. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, just kidding." Yeah. Or like, I don't know, both my parents are dead and I've gone on dates with dudes where I've made a dead parent joke because they've like asked about my parents. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, wow. Uh, I'm so sorry to I'm bring so that sorry. up. I'm so sorry. Wow. And then I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Truly, I tried to name my incorporation uh, Orphan Pussy. Like, I'm mm. I'm okay with it. Yeah. And, oh, my God. what? And it's just like, it's hard to like come back from that when like somebody just doesn't get jokes. Then I've gone out with dudes who... Actually, I didn't go out with this guy. We had texted for like a fucking week and we like finally made a date to like yeah. go out. And I was like, hey, this is going to be good. We've talked for too long. It's not going to be good, but whatever. I'm going to go out because I'm pushing myself to just like go out with dudes. And but yeah, you got to learn a little. Just got to learn. He yeah. like kept making jokes. And then finally I was like, hey, man, these aren't jokes. And he was like, what? And I was like, these aren't jokes. You're just like, there's nothing whimsical about it. There's no twist. There's no punch. You're just saying like weird shit and that's not a joke. And then I gave him an example of a joke and then he never texted me again. Damn. Well, he's not funny. Have you ever tried like dating other types of artists? Cause that's sort of like where I'm at. Like and I, I've, it's yeah. been very successful. Like the last girl I was super sprung on was like a musician, oh. visual artist. And like, it was really cool to compare notes mm -hmm. and like, Create like there's a creative brain existing in that human being, but mm -hmm. in a completely different realm of like existence. Like comedy's so different than making music, mm -hmm. but there are parallels that you can be like. So how do you write a song? Just like how do how I do write, you write a, a joke? <laughs> Fuck off, dude. <laughs> so I it's guess because there's no water in it anymore, so there's no weight. No, I think the world is trying to be like, stop taking yourself so fucking seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bink. No, I understand that. And honestly, it's never crossed my mind to date like an artist or a photographer or something like that. And I think it's because I've met so many just actors, like straight actors who don't do comedy, where I'm like, ugh, 
you're bad. Oh, you think you, you might get like scuzzed out by like bad. some like, yeah, and it's really important for me to think about my yeah, my like someone days. who's just like, oh man, when I played this character in um, uh, Edward Albee's The Good or Who Is Sylvia ten years ago in the uh, uh, Susquehanna Playhouse, uh, where I got paid six pennies to do it for thirty two weeks, um, f- the way I got into my character, I'm like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. That doesn't matter. Like, I feel like a lot of actors live in the past they're like they live in that last job they had and then when they're never in the present because they're in the past with the last job and then they're in the future of the job that they want yes and i think it's really hard to be present with someone who's not present and also a lot of actors are like very narcissistic very much and then a lot of them are like climby and they just which is a whole other facet of yeah that's got to be very difficult for you where you're like phasing out like how genuine is this stuff yeah and it's i am in a weird spot because like i'm not super successful but like i'm okay i'm doing all right yeah and it's just people sometimes would I'm mo- like, mooch off less for yes, sure yeah and it's like i don't know what this person actually fundamentally wants from me because i've like gone out with dudes who've like openly fangirled over me where yeah. i'm like oh this doesn't feel good this is weird and then I've gone out with dudes who've like withheld that they knew who I was till like later. And it's just like, it's, it's very, it's weird t- to date. Have you ever gone out with a girl and then she was just like later, like, I've seen you at UCB or I've seen you on TV? Uh, after the fact? Mm-hmm. No. I'll tell you something. It's a no. very, very weird feeling. I would imagine it being strange. Um, I guess if it was a good interaction separate from that moment, I'd be mm-hmm. like, hey, well, it got me that fair you know okay here's a question what's Great. your favorite position favorite position mm-hmm. how you like to fuck how do i like to fuck i feel like i'm gonna answer two questions i'm gonna answer it two ways okay i love a good ride i love when i'm just chilling <laughs> 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 well because there's you know it's tight that's tight and i <laughs> <laughs> um and then i love like a good like we're both kind of sleepy on the couch and I'm just going to fuck you on the couch. <laughs> like, and you like accidentally get shoved like way back in the corner. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, <laughs> so that's, I guess that's like a, tr- a traditional missionary, but you've got like couch angles and like sure, easy sure. pillow. You know sure. what I mean? I like that your favorite position is just like, I don't know. When we're both just lying there. <laughs> Just wiggling on top of each no, other. No, it's like I'm. I'm talking the the. I don't know is the preface where it's like you didn't expect to fuck. Like ah. you had a little too much like tortellini for dinner. You're watching like <laughs> Amazing Race season seventeen uh. because you're watching it at backwards order and you're gonna watch them all because you're stupid. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, I kind of want to fuck right now. And then you like look and then you get the a okay and you're like, all right. Sounds- that to me is. Like a dream, honestly. Oh, it's a treat. I yeah, I've never had like sitting at home sex. I mean, I lived with a girlfriend for a while, so I oh, I, I, had, okay. I had plenty of that, but it also came with like every other bad thing involved. Mm-hmm. With... She was crazy, right? She was wild. She was. She is. <laughs> we don't even have to get into it. We don't it was have tough. enough time. Yeah, I'll just say it was tough. Is that your only long term girlfriend, or have you had? More? I've had a few. I've had, How many long-term girlfriends have you had? Okay, let's see. I had a high school girlfriend that I would mm-hmm. consider long-term, even though in comparison to the others it is not. Okay. But that was like eight-ish months. In high school, I think that's a long time. Yeah. And we like did the summer and broke up over the summer. So oh. it was like we tried, mm-hmm. didn't work out. Um, and then there was a girl that I dated for three and a half years um, that I was probably still in love with. Aww. I don't think about it too much. Sorry, I brought it up. No, here. it's it's totally fine. Okay. Uh, and then Did you live with that girl? No. No, no. I lived with the girl that I dated too soon after her because mm-hmm. I was broken. Mm-hmm. And this girl was like, "I'll I can fix you." And then she did it. Oh, she just ruined me more. And then that was a year and a half. Okay. Uh, maybe a little more, but in my mind, it was a year and a half. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. since her. I don't consider having any like actual long term relationships. And how long ago was that? 2015. Oh, okay, it's not super long ago. Yeah, <sighs> feels like two years feels like a a long time. 
There, I've had, I've dated people and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't say we were in a relationship. I've never had a long-term boyfriend. What do you think it's going to take? I don't know. So I'm doing a podcast, trying yeah. to figure it out. Why do you think I'm single? I don't know. I mean, man. we don't know each other I mean, super well, but I think like I'm gonna say like our size is a huge factor. I think so. You know, I still think you're a beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. I think you wear your weight well, which oh, a lot of women you. don't. Um, you're proportional, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it makes sense, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, maybe you're too eager. Maybe. Enthusiasm is, eagerness and enthusiasm is, is like poison in Los Angeles. (sighs) You know what I mean? And I hate it because I love liking things and I (laughs) love being stoked on things. But like, let's extrapolate the like improv world. Okay. Nobody will say that they're absolutely in love with this and this is the only art form that they could do and like function in. Cause they're, it's not, that's not cool to be that way. I guess. You just yeah. do improv, man. Yeah. And I you want to be improv. on Harold, you want to blah, blah, blah and get there and do uh-huh. blah, blah, blah. But like, the real shit is, is you fucking love this. You fucking love uh-huh. this so much. Why don't we all talk about how much we love this thing? You're right, because the minute someone's like, I fucking love improv, you're like, God Shut damn. up, you fucking nerd. Wow, I never thought of it like that. And I think that, uh, you know, boil it back up, that's everywhere in Los yeah. Angeles. Like, don't like that band too much. Just go to the show and bob your head. Like, uh-huh. don't be too stoked on, like, so-and-so. Mm-hmm. You don't want to, like, be too uncool. Yeah, I guess that's like when people are like, don't let them know you're available. And I'm like, I'm on Tinder, <laughs> where I'm literally having yes. someone go, please swipe yes. That's like not only available, it's desperation. Sure, sure. Like dating is desperation. Uh, I think it, it's a, I think you can come at dating as a desperate thing, but I think that's a mental yeah, shift. Sure. That you just got to be like, I mean, the thing is, is like, and I think this is true for most of us, like, the person we're supposed to be with will smack us up beside the head. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like my dad always talks about he got set up with my mom. They went on a date. And this is a recent thing that I found out. But they like they went on a date and like hung out a few times. And then there was like a month that they didn't see each other. And he was just like driving around town. And they both stopped at a stop sign at the same time. And he was like, oh, Michelle. Yeah, I remember Michelle. And then she rolled down the window. I was like, hey, Tim, what are you doing? And then he was like, I just knew then because the universe presented her to me. Jesus and I had almost forgotten. Fucking Christ. That is fucking adorable. Isn't it cute? It's so yes. cute. And that's like, he was like, now I know, man. Fuck. And my parents have like a cute ish story. My mom was working her way through college. Uh-huh. So she was older because. When you work you're and paying it yourself, you just have to take less classes. Yeah. It's cheaper. My dad was, you know, I think he was like the appropriate age as a college student. And he was not great with English because he's like a math and science guy. Mm-hmm. So my mom started tutoring him. And then she he would like, she would drive him around because he didn't have a car. And she smoked. And he'd be like, uh, you don't smoke in your car when I'm in it. And she's like, this is my fucking car. <laughs> but then she ended up like quitting smoking for him because oh, she wow. liked him so much. Yeah. And then after he, they after he graduated, I think she graduated too, he moved to Jersey for a job at AT&T. And then they wrote each other letters every week. Oh, God. And That's so darling. It's so cute. And we, I still have their letters. But some of them were fucked up. <laughs> my dad would say such beautiful, nice things to my mom and then go, I'll see you at 1.30. And I don't mean the time. He meant he wanted her to lose weight. Oh, <laughs> Isn't that wow. fucked up? And I was like, you were 130 pounds or somewhere yeah. near that? And he was not happy? That's incredible. That's wild. Yeah. But nuts. those are just two people that found each other. Yeah. And like built a care for each other mm-hmm. and an understanding and let that exist. Yeah. And it became a thing that and it, blossomed and they really like fucking lo- like when my mom died, my dad was heartbroken. Yeah. Like they used to fight, but then like thinking back, it was like they fought over the dumbest shit. Like my mother would go get she would get a card sent to her and be like, This is darling, and then spend four hundred dollars framing it. And my dad would be like, Why? Why are you framing greeting cards? And yeah. she's like, what is so nice on our wall? And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, they fight so much. But it's like, they fought over nothing. Yeah. I mean, and that's like, just a money thing. That's yeah. not like, I don't care about you. No. That's like, I'm trying to 
save money. Yeah, or and then like he would harp on her weight or whatever. But I, I don't know. Talking to his like parents, you're like, oh, he grew up in an awful environment with terrible people who yeah. were nasty. Yeah. So like, of course, that rubbed off on him. But then, yeah, like after she died, he like was just the saddest man I've ever met. And I do think he died of like a broken heart. I think that yeah. can happen. I mean, my dad loves my mom on another level. Mm-hmm. And like he's very vocal about it. And he just Ugh. like lets it be known. And my mom like <laughs> loves my dad, but she's always just like, <laughs> uh, you're lucky I'm a patient woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, it's not. In my, it's like not in my perspective balanced, but it is balanced mm-hmm. within the relationship. No, it is, or at least from what I'm yeah. understanding, it is. Because, uh, but the 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 perfect thing is like, and the I guess the perfect or bad thing is that they set a good example of like yeah. what a relationship is and how you care for another mm-hmm. person. Like my dad would do anything for my mom. Mm-hmm. Like he would harp on her weight or whatever, but like when it came down to it, anything anything Bonnie wanted, she got Bonnie. I didn't yeah. know her name was Bonnie. Well, her name was Lily, but her nickname was Bonnie. Bonnie. Isn't that wild? Yes. Very <laughs> wild. It's longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lily, because that's the name they wanted. Bonnie was my grandmother's friend. Mm. So- <laughs> Not even her like middle name. No. It's just a buddy. No, her name was uh, Lily Buford Barnett. No, Lily Barnett Buford. Oh, God. Oh, no. Well, she's. I'm almost alive longer than she's than I knew her. That's fair. So I'm do allowed you, to fuck shit up. Do you think you've met the person that you're going to be with? Sometimes I do think so, but then but then I'm like, no, I don't think so. And then I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I've only felt like a, a thing once where I was like, oh, I see myself with this person mm. for, I don't know, maybe the foreseeable future. And then it didn't work out. And then I was like, oh, well, I had this feeling. Why, why isn't this feeling correct? It was not wrong. Just wasn't reciprocated. Reciprocated, right? I mean, I don't even know if it was reciprocated. Yeah. Like a lot of times, things end and you don't get closure. Oh, for sure, man. It's very annoying. Oh, it's very. It's a a big thing that I still don't know how to deal with. Yes. Where it's just a push down. Like the last chick that I like seriously dated, I was like very sprung on. Mm-hmm. I was very into, and I was felt like she felt the same way Mm -hmm. and then just like two times over i've gotten the rug pulled out and there's no explanation people like okay i think two dates whatever you don't owe me shit but like if we've put in hours and like there's now my part-time job like being with you then like i don't know tell me tell me something meaningful as to why this isn't working and you can't hurt my feelings because you're just telling me the truth. Because on yeah, this podcast, you're only gonna help. I've had people because I always ask like, "Why won't you date me?" And people have said some like poignant things where I'm like, "Oh, oh. yeah, yeah." I, like in the moment, that may have hurt my feelings, but it would have been nice to know in the moment that maybe I could have worked on it sooner. Yeah, like being emotionally available or like. Tell me like I'm too ugly for you. Like I'm even fine with that. Said, I would I lose 50 can't. pounds in a week if a girl I really like <laughs> was like, you know, I don't date you. You're too fat, dude. I think you're great. I think you're yeah. funny. You're just too fat for me. I don't want to be seen dating you. Yeah. That might fucking shift a shit in my head. But everybody's just like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And I think they're like afraid of hurting your feelings. And it's like, well, you already did. Yes. You already did by like not responding to me or not being. Cause like, all right. So maybe you tell me one thing where you're like, you know what? I don't, I don't think I have time for a relationship and I'm not ready. Okay. Then why are you still texting me? They're like, you can, you could say, I don't think I want to date you, but I like the idea of you and I still want to talk to you. Yeah. That's like, oh, okay. Then great. I know that texting you is fruitless and I should do it if I'm okay with that. Yeah. As opposed to like, I guess I'll text him back. Cause like, I don't know. I don't know what he wants. I don't, I don't, he won't tell me. Well, okay. We've come to the time in this podcast. Oh, here we go. Where I reveal that I have hooked up with you, but I haven't hooked up with you. So yeah. no. in a world where we were attracted to each other and like could fuck and date, would you date me? I, I think we'd be, I'm going to say no. Okay. I think we could for a minute, but uh-huh. I know that we would be awful for each other. <laughs> and I mean that in like a a uh, inhibiting way. Okay. I think 
I think we have similar flaws mm-hmm. that we would just magnify. I think we would eat ourselves to death. Yes, I think we'd I eat think ourselves to we death. Would enable each other to just be like, yeah, we could have tacos with whipped cream on top. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> that's that, okay. I think, um, but I also think like. I mean, like, we're two people that spend a lot of time together. I've never been annoyed by you. Mm-hmm. I've never been offended by you. So I did I- whisper the N-word in your face, <laughs> and you asked me not to do that. That was me being funny. <laughs> I mean, I- I truly yeah. didn't know. I was like, no, did I cross the line? Oh, God, no. God, no. <laughs> Great. I'll be sure to whisper it while you sleep. Yeah. I think we'd have, like, a fun run for two to three weeks, mm-hmm. and then we'd realize that we've, like, been inside for two to three weeks uh-huh. and, like, haven't left anywhere, um, probably doing too many drugs. Oh, baby, we would do drugs. You know, I think we'd have fun. Mm-hmm. We could have fun. I agree. I think... But also there's, like, in a very real world, like, in my mind, you're a friend and you're also, like, a person that I work with, which is, mm-hmm. like... It just makes it so much more difficult to even, like, think of a world where that could exist, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because then there's just, like, a lot of spider webs. Like, it's just, like, too intertwined. And then it's just, like, well, if we broke up and then, like, how to fucking spend 10 hours, 12 hours a day together, like, trying to be funny. It's like, oh, that joke was great. (sighs) Why did you break my heart? Yeah, yeah. And it would be weird. It'd be very It'd be very weird. Yeah, I think we would be very bad for each other. I think... Which couples, just kind of sucks, but like at least we know. Yeah, I don't think couples can be too too much of peas in a pod. No, I need I need a I need the counterbalance. Yes, I need someone who'd be like, "Hey, Nicole, maybe if you were quiet for five minutes, we'd all be happy." And I'd be like, "Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be screaming in my backyard at you know one a.m. <laughs> because I have neighbors." <laughs> It'd be nice. Like the ideal situation is that you lift someone up with like. Mm -hmm. bringing them out in this way and then they you know for me it's like you help me be a little organized and like Mm -hmm. more conscious about that stuff and then i let you be a little more loose Mm -hmm. you know like that's a balance i I want to create we need similar partners yes someone to just balance out the silly because i think we're two silly people Mm -hmm. who lean into silliness but we need someone that understands the yes. silliness because I've not had women annoyed by the silliness. I've had women be like, "You are so weird," and that mm-hmm. like hurts me almost more than mm-hmm. like saying you think I'm ugly. Yes, because I'm not weird. I'm just like full fun, of life, yeah. <laughs> fun and and flirty and cool. And you're like so your mind is so small that my behavior yes, is weird. It's weird, and it's like, and no, it's like there are weirdos. There are like someone talking to themselves in the middle of the street, being like. I'm a pigeon. That's weird. Yes, that's, that's not weird. okay. Mm-hmm. But like, if I'm sitting in a room and I'm like, caw, 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 that's like being silly. Yeah, yeah. I worked at Lane Bryant for too long, mm-hmm. and <laughs> too long, <laughs> all, <laughs> just too long. All the girls there would be like, "You're fucking weird." They would like talk behind my back and be like, "Oh, she's so fucking weird." Because I wear like tutus and like <laughs> I just like you like I'd had wear a my fun hair. Life. Little, yeah. yeah, I was having the time of my life. We would listen to this. uh CD on loop, so we would like hear the same fucking songs three or four times a re- like uh, in the day. So I would pick a song and do a dance. I would be like, "It's our dance break now," and then dance for the whole song. And they'd be like, "God, <laughs> you're so fucking weird." And I'm like, "All right, it may be weird, but like, guess what? I laughed for like two minutes at this fucking hellhole yeah. where we fold underwear that's bigger than people." Yes, like <laughs> some of those panties <laughs> are just like are just like. Truly, like car. fucking tablecloths. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's we gotta wrap this up. Hey, Jacob, well, this was great. Thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Thank you for talking to me off the clock because we talk all fucking day long. Yeah, I was actually excited about this because I knew I wouldn't see you tomorrow. And I was You'll like, see I get me my... tomorrow. I keep saying this. <laughs> I, maybe I'm, my brain really doesn't want to see you. Oh, finally, one fucking one. day without Nicole. Oh, Thank God. She, oh, man, she's just so loud. She <laughs> screams. She sexually harasses everyone on the crew. I said it's fine. Thanks. I said it's fine. You can sexually harass whomever. I think it's okay. I'm honestly just being playful, and I don't actually think I'm going to like find a boyfriend on a set. Like everyone's I'm, taken. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find her. She's there. She's... I know she's there. She's a little older. You're, like, You're going to make it happen. You're going to work it out. You do have competition, though. Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, at Jacob Wysocki. Um, watch the Bath Boys on YouTube, Bath Boys Comedy. 
Jacob also performs live at the UCB Theater on Herald Night. Your team is called Yeti. And if you just go to the website, click on Herald Night, you can figure out which team is playing uh, what night. He's also on a show called Loosely Exactly Nicole. It's my show. Very funny. I'm really excited about it. I think it's funny. I'm pleased with it. I hope you watch it. I should have plugged that first. It's okay. You don't have to. Yeah. Um, you have other shit going on. It's just one of your many jobs. But truly, Jacob, you are funny. Thank you. You're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I hope that I can help you become very fat, very brave. I want to get you in that headspace. I'm I'm um, ready to be a Padawan to your Jedi master. What's a Padawan? Okay, so a Jedi, you know what a Jedi is? It's uh, one of them people with the lights. Yeah, the, the, with the lights, yes. They uh, teach somebody to become uh-huh. a Jedi, and that is their Padawan. Oh, okay. Uh so a mentor. Is that better? Is that I have never watched the Stir Wars. Yeah, you don't need to. I'm not one of those fuckers. Good. It's like, oh my god! You yeah. haven't seen it. I just I don't know. Star Wars really loses me with that like robot man in the dumpster that follows him. The gold man, that gold sassy man. C three PO and R2 D2. Fucking trash dumpster that yeah, rolls. Argu- arguably like some of the most important famous characters in just like like all of I mean, history. It's like whatever. Like, okay, so there's a flashy gold man who's like I don't know, not like super like what is he doing? He's like funny and British. Yeah, but he's also like super gay, and it's like, why doesn't he get to fuck like another like robots gold don't robot? Necessarily, f- like have like a to diamond fuck. robot. They're not designed to. F- I don't like, think. They're why like, why doesn't he fuck that little trash bin? Because <laughs> they're both. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay, if you like my podcast, I hope you do. You made it this far. I want you to rate it five stars on iTunes, and if you comment something where you hit on me. I will read it out loud. An example of that is, girl, you so you so thick and juicy. I can't wait to get up in that booty. Or something like, let me spread them ass cheeks apart and savagely tear your asshole up. Or something like, uh, ooh, baby, your lips are so sweet. I want to flop my dick in between them. Or something like, uh, girl, I'm going to fuck you so hard, your eyeballs is going to pop out. Oh Those are all God. just off the dome. Just off the dome. Because <laughs> I forgot to screenshot some more to read. I'm going to fuck you so hard you feel it in your tonsils. Yes. yes. That's a good one. That's, That's nice. a good one. That's Jacob Waisaki right there. Uh-huh. All right, Jacob. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> I won't see you tomorrow. You're not coming in tomorrow. I'll see you Tuesday. No, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, I'll Thank see you, you Jacob. Tuesday. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're lovely. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> That was a HeadGum Podcast.